Hi, David. Hey, David. Hello, Bill. Hello, Tom. And David, this is Snake. Snake played banjo in in um, Denver. Oh, all right. Okay. My name My name's David Krippner. I uh, had worked in the New Orleans Club. Oh, I'm Ron Mormon, but uh, AKA Snake. Snake. Okay. <laughs> I heard I heard him talk about Snake, but I never met you before. And it was well, I, all good. It, it was all good, Snake. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I uh, uh, played the Denver Club quite a while, and and I was in New York, and I was at uh, Oklahoma City, and I was at uh, Clearwater Beach, and occasionally got to sit in with uh, Gentry in uh, Brussels. Wow, oh, I played Brussels too. Okay. I'll tell you what, you're um the you just bought a, a the camera, right? Yeah, it's it's very sharp. Looks good. good. Yeah, you can see all the junk behind me. I can. <laughs> <laughs> I see a big safe. You must have a lot of money. Well, I've got uh, numerous collections and guns. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. It's a gun safe. Okay. There's Pete. Hey, There's Pete. Pete. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon. Yeah, Pete. <laughs> Take your pick. Hey, Pete. Yeah, we were just talking to, you know, Ron Snake from Denver? No. Well, you do now, because... I think we met. Hi, Pete. Hello. Hey, you guys Snake. talk for a second. I got to take a call. The hey. Snake, did you um, did you come play in New Orleans at all? No, I didn't. We're pretty remote out here, and, and uh, it wasn't where all the action was, and that was on the East Coast of New Orleans. Hmm. But it was kind of fun to play in Brussels. No, I oh, yeah. Since the last time we talked. Well, don't don't go there to play uh, Mardi Gras this year because uh, ain't no Mardi Gras. Well, <laughs> uh, with this damn thing, uh, I don't want to get out and get the COVID to kill me right now. Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> me too. I had uh, I had pneumonia and they did a scan and they found they found the confirmed pneumonia. I don't know. I mean, uh, but hmm. they also found cancer. No, I oh no. And they cut out two thirds of my right lung. Wow. Two thirds, yeah. Right. Uh, Are you cancer free now? That was a rough one. Yeah, they treated you. Uh, or did you do chemo or um, radiation after that, or they got it all? Either one. They, I've got a CAT scan coming up this next week. Mm -hmm. It's been a year. So I've, wow. I've had three clean CAT scans. Fantastic. We're hoping for another one. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I'm a cancer survivor. Eight years ago, I had cancer of my lower mandible, left mandible, and uh, I'm sure once I get the uh, they took out they took out the half the mandible, took some bones out of or some pieces out of my left fibula, and put them in there and took a chunk of thigh out and gave me a gum. But uh, that doesn't sound fun at all. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, it was an eleven-hour operation, but I've been cancer-free for eight years now. So minus four. It's amazing what they can do these days. Yeah. But uh, I'm still surviving and drinking a few beers. And huh? Oh, good for you. Yeah, I'm grateful. I give thanks every day for being alive. Playing a little banjo when he'll hire us. Yeah. Did y'all have a Friday afternoon club in Denver? No, I think you had a great relationship with it. Well, we we had Friday afternoon any day. <laughs> yeah. Well, now we in, in New Orleans. Uh, we in fact we started this thing called it the Friday afternoon club because we used to let people in at five o'clock on Friday night and they could drink for two hours for like what was it five dollars for guys and three fifty for girls. Something like that. And, yeah. You know, the, by the time the band got ready to come on at like eight o'clock, uh, the, the audience was there and primed. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So we had, uh, on, on the weekends, we had a blind bar on the streets. Oh, okay. Throwing peanuts in when they got in and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So they let y'all drink out, out of the outside on the street in Denver? No. No? No. Not like not like New Orleans. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> I found out that New Orleans was unique when I moved from New Orleans. I lived in went to Dallas 
and I was trying to get a go cup for my drink from a bar. And a guy says, what do you mean a go cup? I said, you know, you pour my drink in a cup. He said, you can't drink it outside the club. So I had to stand there by the door and drink my drink, you know. Hmm. Yeah, that's, no, we didn't uh, no drinking outside in Denver. Mm -hmm. She's growing hemp. I live in the first suburb west of Denver, which is Lakewood. Not plant, but grow Before you hit the mountains. Okay. Yeah, that's all I know. Uh, I know she's working. Never been to the Denver Club, uh, but I know that. Um, well, who? Uh, almost, I think a lot of the band members that get on here have played to Denver. Um, Mike, did Mike Gentry, and uh, yeah, Barry, Mike very, no Mike very well. Barry, Barry Foulon, and uh, sometimes Danny Rubio's on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I played with two leads. Uh, well, uh, let's see, there was a. Uh, Oh, uh, Jerry Goodnight and uh, uh, who else? Joe Petroselli, was he there? Petroselli was there. Uh, let's see, uh, Bob Vanasek. I don't know if you knew those guys. Jay Brackett, was he there? Uh, uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, was Gene, wasn't Gene Roof playing there? Yeah, he sure was. LeBeau? <laughs> yeah. Well, he was one of the Denver guys. So was uh, H. Johnson. Yeah. And uh, well, we had uh, Petrocelli, we had Bill Clark. Uh, Bill Clark of the two of those ones. Yes. Yeah, I, I that was your instrument, wasn't it, Pete? I think it's. Pardon? Tuba? Yeah, I was a tuba player. Well, you know, if, if you've got the land, so, have you been able to, look, able to see any of the mustache videos, the meeting videos that Tom's been posting? I've uh, I watched the zooms uh, after after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yes, Rick. Uh, hey. Oh, Rick. Hey, Rick. What's up? Rick. Is that me? Oh, it is me. Hey, yeah. your ass. what's up? <laughs> yeah. Haley. Rick Haley. Yeah. Hi, Rick. Hey. I'm, I'm Snake. Hey, how you doing? Good. He played in the Denver Club. Oh, okay. That's the only other club I ever went to other than the New Orleans Club. I, don't, I enjoyed it. It was nice up there. I enjoyed it. Sure. Oh, we yeah. have a lot better job than the New Orleans Club. Hello? Oh. <laughs> oh. Just oh. Talking oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, how's everybody doing? Doing great. Yeah. Woke up on the right side of the grass today, so I'm doing well. Didn't see dirt or, or flames nope. or anything. Okay. <laughs> now, Pete, yeah, you already fine. had you had the first uh, vaccination, right? Yes, on uh, uh, January sixth. I have the second on February third. This coming up week. Right. Yeah, yeah, me and Sam, we we had our first uh, first one this Thursday. The Advent Zoom. All right. Yeah, the Moderna or the uh, other one. Moderna. That's what I had. Yeah, just a little sore in the. I mean, just it, it's going away now. A little bit sore. In the, you know. Well, they say it once after the second shot, it takes another fourteen days to be fully effective. If I hear, oh, really? in theory. In theory. <laughs> uh oh, I said someone's coughing here. What's going on? <laughs> no. Bill, you didn't have um, one you, of your vaccinations yet, did you? No, I'm not old enough yet, like you guys. Well, you got your white hair. You're, you're a good start. My liver's my liver's my liver is plenty old enough. To really up the, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I missed it, but just one year. I'll be seventy this year, later this year. So, I'm, uh, but I think they're gonna drop it down to sixty-five soon. If they, I'm waiting because um, I heard that um, that Tony Sassery was gonna put out a, a version of the vaccine, and I'm ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 83. Yeah. They haven't called me yet. Oh, really? Really? Wow. Well, do you I'm have to sign up? Next. Do you have to sign up in Denver? Do you have to, or, or would you you live in Denver now or that area? I, I live in Lakewood, which is the first suburb. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we signed up uh, through the hospital here, as, and never really heard anything. We said then we signed up with Ochsner Health System over in Louisiana because we're Ochsner patients. We can travel across the state line and do that. And then, of course, naturally, they had 
postponed. They ran out of vaccine. Don't know when they're going to have some. Then Wednesday evening, we had a phone call. Did you? We had some vaccines at the hospital here in town and uh, through the uh, Hattiesburg, uh, uh, the Forest General Hospital up in Hattiesburg. So yeah, we got it. Yeah. yeah well, I'm I'm waiting. I'm uh, waiting too, but I know we're going to get it. It's just a matter of when they get it distributed. I'm just tired of hearing about it because we signed up with one county, with the county next to ours, because we thought we could do that. And then yeah. we got these slips that said you must be there February 4th at such and such a time. But now we found out that, well, you can't cross county lines. Really? All of Emily's friends are getting it because they did, you know, they did this or they did that. And it's like kindergarten stuff, like stop talking yeah. about it. We'll well, get the county in Florida is doing it differently. You guys are doing it. You're, I thought your your governor was crazy when he did it and just opened it up, but it worked because you got your shots. Yeah. And so yeah. did Ira. Oh, Ira's had his too, both of them? Yeah. I he'll, I, he'll be on later. Pete had a better experience. Pete, tell us how you did it. You just drove in, didn't you? You didn't even get out no, your car. Me, no. We, uh, the uh, mayor of Orlando came on the air beginning of uh, January and he said, at 4.30, he said, go to this website and sign in. My wife and I, she was on her computer, I was on mine. She got in, and when you go in, you choose both dates, the first date, and they say to pick a time slot between like two hours. Hers was three to five. And then you have to choose a second date so they know that you're going to be you're not going to say, well, the heck with the second shot. Yeah, yeah my I God, went he, on he's still alive. Log. Hey, Jeff, I went, I, hey, went Jeff. To log, I went to log on and it crashed. I could not get on. And uh, later that, on the news, I said, well, the uh, so many people went on and it crashed. So she said, well, try, try it early in the morning while I wake up couple of times a night to go pee. So five o'clock, I said, shit, I'm going to try now. Boom, got I got it. right in. Really? I had to pick both days. When I went, they you print out a QR code, at least in Orlando, and you first you drive through, and they've got- Your, Yours was a drive-through? Pardon? Yours was a drive-through? To... Yes, it was. It was at the convention center. And they, you first drive in, and you're nowhere near the entrance, but you have to show this first girl your QR code, which shows that you, you're not just coming in. And then she said, you follow this, boom, 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 went around and entered the bottom floor of the parking garage. Wow. And they're all there, and they check it again, and... It was just, I was in and out of there in like 30 minutes. All I had to do was make phone calls. I, I called the local hospital two or three days in a row and finally got someone to answer the phone and, and they set me up for, a, you know, just put me on the list. Never heard anything back. They never, ever called Sandra back. And so uh, I said, well, I called uh, Oshner over in New Orleans, you know, the, the Oshner hospital right. system. And they, and they uh, got on that. They said, sure. I said, but we live in Mississippi. We don't live in Louisiana. So it doesn't matter. You're an Oshner, you're an Oshner patient. So they set us up for in Slidell. And then, right. of course, they ran out of vaccine, you know. So, wow. and then the hospital here called up and said, come. So we went on and did it here, you know. Well, that's good. We, we, we didn't have to wait in line. We walked into a, the hospital, walked to a little back room that we, we didn't even have to wait in line to get the shot. There were three, there were half, half a dozen people sitting outside waiting. You'd have to wait after you get your shots, you wait for a bit, you know. And, so hey, Professor, how you doing? Hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, hey Jeff. Oh, how you doing? Up, Jeff? It's a bunch of old men talking about vaccines. Hey, listen. Can you pee? Yeah. yeah. That's all we worry about at this age. <laughs> how you doing, Jeff? How am I doing? Yeah. It's Snake. I know Snake. Snake from Denver. I, Snake I'm doing left. fine. I'm doing fine. I have a little problem. I'm dying. Other what? than that, 
Snake put a computer camera just so he could come and talk to you, Jeff. Well, we, listen, we email, we email back and forth once in a while. Yes. Good, good. I email anyone within two weeks. I'm very fast now. I don't worry about squat. I've got good, my, good attitude. <laughs> I've got my nitro. Oh, there you go. All right. That's don't shake it or it'll explode. Yeah. No, I just you know, all my life I had that image. Yeah. It would blow up. Yeah. yeah I take a pill <laughs> and that would be it. <laughs> It's, I, it's not uh, I, see the image. <laughs> I don't know, Snake. I don't know. I am in hospice care now, which means that twice a week, a nurse comes in and takes my blood pressure. Twice a week, an aide comes in. She's 90 pounds and a little frail. She helps me get a shower. I mean, she doesn't shower me. I need someone so I don't, <laughs> I don't lay on the floor when I fall. Oh. No, no, that's only happened a couple of times. Very gracefully. Very gracefully, I go down very slowly. And... It's not <laughs> the only thing that surprises me is when people say, oh, you can't talk like that. When they say, I'm dying. Is there anyone there who's not dying? We're all dying. Guys, you got anyone there? Since day one, we were, we're all dying. Okay. The only thing is, I have always... been okay with death good you know i've been hey i made it to 80 the only thing longer than the years is my medical history <laughs> that, that's it yeah yeah you know they say fill out a form with your medical history i hang up you know it's and i made it to 80 okay I'm not, oh, anyway, I grew up in a family of physicians. So death and sickness was never, never far away from me. But I've decided now that I'm not afraid of death, but dying is inconvenient. Dying is inconvenient. But since. Here comes Mike Johnson. Uh, hello, Mike. Hey, Mike. Look at that sky. Is that real or a painting? That was a photograph I took about five years ago uh, in northern Arizona. <laughs> we can see your eyebrows, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Both but you there you go. You well, look I, like the sun. No, no, you, you, got, you got a nice I didn't want to scare you guys too bad right away. Hi, it's Snake. Like the sun coming over the horizon. How you doing, Mike? I'm okay. Long time, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was so, look at this. Barry. Hello. Barry. Hey, Hoss. Hey, hey, Barry. What's up, Barry? Well, Billy and I have gotten some videos together, and we're going to play a couple this time. So I thought maybe we oh, okay. we just start <clears throat> to get going. So let me share the screen if I can. And...
Could you hear and see that? Yeah, yeah. That great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. I have chest pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We can we can insert a smoother plan version of that on the video. For some reason, they don't play very smoothly on Zoom, but Tom's Tom's been able to insert the actual video into the replay. Yeah, the thing I sent out this week had you know a opening and a close video that none of you had seen. So if you want to look yeah, at that it, was you, good. I saw it. That yeah, was good. Really, yeah. yeah, we're trying to bring up the quality here. <laughs> There's only so much you can do. <laughs> yeah. But um, for the New Orleans guys, people, this is, I showed this to Billy a little while ago. Let me try to share this screen. Uh, this is something that Billy s saw. Can you see that? There it is. Um, this uh, is Kent McBride. Yeah. Roger. Big Bill, Bill. Yeah, and there's um, Jim Stanzak. Look at that. Yeah. And, Bob um, yeah, I saw this and I thought, wow, that's that brings back some memories, Bob. Is that Bill Sawyer? Yeah. That's Big Bill. That's Bob Osborne. Bob, Bill. Bob Osborne. And Roger's. Uh, Bob. Oh, okay. Look at Roger. Roger looks like um, an old miner from yeah. the 49er days. Yeah. Yeah. That <laughs> was actually. Um, I think Kent was holding that picture. That was at the 50th year reunion. He was showing it to me, and I had I videotaped it out of his hand he, while he was holding it. So that's just a freeze frame. And if you look, if you look just to the right of the picture, you can kind of see a girl and blurred out, just half of her face showing. She's the girl holding the beer in that picture right there, uh, right above Roger's head, the, the brunette. Oh, she, okay. Yeah, I think it was one of them had brought that picture in because they were they were. I think it was a couple of girls and they were both in it and they showed up at the reunion, the 50th year reunion. So yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. And that is Edwin Krebs. Hey. I thought that looked like Edwin. Uh, but I don't know it was him. Hey Chris. Hey, hey Chris. Chris. Hey Chris. Hey Chris. Hey, is that Krebs? Edwin Krebs in there? I think so on the left. All the way to the left on the top. We were wondering yeah. about that. I think that's I think that's Edwin, yeah. It looks like yeah. Edwin, but yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. I'll ask Roger if he shows up. Yeah. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Nice yeah. to be here. <laughs> is that your, is, is hey, that your iPhone? What's that? Is that your iPhone you're on? It yes, it is. Questions? Man, it looks great. That's what people are telling me. It, you know, it looks the same to me. But uh, they're they're saying it really looks sharp. The video yeah, quality. Sure. Got a, I just got a new iPhone uh, 12 Mini. Oh, is that what that is? There is it go. good? The iPhone 12 is good. Yeah. Well, it looks it's working good. out. Working out good for me. The battery. You know, my old phone. The battery would last about three or four minutes. I think. <laughs> I was always plugging it mm -hmm. in or working with it plugged in or. But they don't last forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they're designed that way. Yeah. Yeah, I was starting so, to give us. We have we have sixes, and we're going to have to replace them. Not on sixes, looks like. Yeah. yeah, I have the same. I have the same problem. Yeah. I look much thinner <laughs> on an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Did an iPhone Mini, you'll even be even be smaller. That's right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, much smaller. I feel more comfortable here. <laughs> yeah. This is my iPad. That's what I've got. Oh, yeah. So I can see all of you guys. So it's wonderful. <laughs> keep sending, <laughs> keep sending pictures of food. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Every time I go on and I see Chris, there's some great stuffed sandwich. Oh yeah, Except with pasta. I didn't even know what it was. Well, it actually, that so was, good. It was a timpano, you know, which is like a stuffed. Um, I wrote a book. I wrote a cookbook called Stuffed, and that was one of the oh, really? publicity photos for it. And uh, that it, the timpano is an Italian dish. Do you ever see the movie The Big Night? 
No. With uh, Stanley Tucci. It's a great, great film. And, it, and it, it's about a couple of Italian brothers who had a restaurant in New Jersey and they were going under. They just couldn't, you know, that they, they just couldn't drum up enough business. And somebody lies to them and says that Louis Prima is going to come to their place for dinner. Mm -hmm. uh, and that that's going to provide them mm -hmm. the promotion that they need to become famous. So they make this outrageous dinner. And one of the dishes is that timpano. So I decided to try to make it. And, um, and then we had a special show on QED uh, called The Big Night, where we made all the recipes from the movie. <laughs> wow. uh, so every, so every time I see your Facebook page, I get hungry. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, Chris. Hey, hey, Jim. Hey, Jim. Jim. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jim, we were, I was just talking about you because we had a video of you playing, you are the most relaxed banjo player <laughs> I've ever seen. Sure, no sense getting upset about these things. Yeah, the pericomo of banjo. Yeah. Yep. No, and, <laughs> and he hit the right notes. Uh, that was something. Oh, we try hard anyway. It all pays the same. No, so <laughs> some of us didn't try hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Gosh. I think you turned to me one night, Gib, and I asked you what you would play, and it was a D minor seventh. Sure. And I had to go to the book to see what the fingering was. <laughs> That's At least unbelievable. <laughs> Gim was, yeah. is the most relaxed, laid back banjo player. That's what, I, that's what I saw. That's yeah. what drugs will do to you. <laughs> <laughs> Les Muscle was a lot like that, too. Yeah, that's right. Les was cool. Les was cool. Les was cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Was cool. His volumes the size of hubcaps. They were okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, old Les. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's been going on in New Orleans? Say, say it again. What's been going on in New Orleans? You know what? It's closed down. Yeah, but I heard that you know, I mean, they're going to phase two now because bars still can't open though, as far as inside drinks. Can't open. Uh, if they do allow music, no singing, no horns. Really, no horns, no horns, not even the gazoo. Nope, no singing and no horns. Influence. Oh, I guess put a mask over the horn. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, you know how the how marching <laughs> bands have those things over the tubas? Yeah. With the school, you put, put advertising on your horn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but it's pretty much closed down. I mean, a lot of the guys I used to work with, they're getting day gigs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot of them are doing those uh, porch uh, concerts. Yeah, and, you see uh, that. Yeah, for those yeah, it doesn't pay more money. You want to get some Venmo contributions. It's kind of like tips on Venmo, and people they stream the videos and people yeah. watch. You know, yeah. A lot of the guys up here were doing the same thing, but now the weather's cold that uh, you can't do it anymore. It it hasn't gone above freezing here in a couple of days. Right oh, now yeah. it's about seven seventeen degrees outside. Oh, Burr. Burr. that's spring. We're hey, John. Hey, John, Hi, John. Can you hear us? Yeah, we got sixty in Denver. Joan is connecting to audio. It's at the bottom of the screen, Joan. It's a little microphone with a red Hi, line. Joan. She can't hear you. You're trying to connect to audio. <laughs> you have to start writing signs. Joan, we're all checking you out. How's it feel to have 10 guys checking you out? You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's trying to connect. Wish I could just show. do it. Yeah. Yay. No. Hey. Hi, Joan. Hi, Joan. And Joni. Joan. She's muted now. It's muted though. <laughs> Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Snake, do you remember Vern Beebe? Well, absolutely. He passed away on the 18th. Oh, really? Cancer. Oh, Who was that? That's bad. A trombone stuff. player in Denver. I don't think any of you guys would have known him, but, oh. but Snake did. Oh. 
Hey, Mike, you know what I got? A, I saw a thing on Facebook from a post from Petrucelli. Well, but, but the post didn't come through. Facebook censored it. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't I don't think Petrucelli's even on Facebook. Well, it, it said his name. His son yeah. is, Jason is, sometimes, but not very often. Yeah. yeah. But he's doing all right? Yeah, I just talked to him a couple of days ago. He's doing good, and he's he's hoping to join us one of these Fridays in a few weeks. Uh, quick question for you guys: Did any of you see the thing on Facebook from uh, some Dennis Port uh, Cape Cod thing that uh, people looking for information on the Mustache nightclub there? I saw that, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I saw I saw I saw it, but I never worked there, so I had no info. Nor did I. They had a really nice nice historical information on the clubs where it had been. So I thought it was well done. Yeah. I tell you, Petroselli is retired from the police department. Yeah, he didn't have a whole lot of choice. He had a bit of a cancer scare a year ago and he's doing all right health-wise. He beat the cancer and uh, stuff, but it's time for him to retire. He's going to be an old part like the rest of us or some of the rest of us <laughs> and, uh, and things. And so it was time he had been a cop for like 40 years almost. Yeah. So yeah. He's finally retired. Now, how about you, your group uh, that you were playing with over at the Bush and Barrel or whatever it was? Yeah, that, the Bull and Bush. We haven't done anything since February because of the virus. Very little music going on in Denver in the way of live music. There's some country clubs doing some things occasionally and uh, some clubs that are doing stuff with streaming with, like you say, asking for donations through Venmo or PayPal. But uh, I just got my first shot today, and uh, congratulations! Yeah, Good. yeah. So far, I'm I'm healthy, wealthy, and I've never been wise. So to hell with that part. But, uh, <laughs> Did you get the Pfizer or the Moderna? The, the Moderna. That's Moderna. What I had. That's what I got. The Moderna too. Yeah, and I go back for the next one on February 26th. So uh, I'm happy to get it done. Yeah, you bet. I yes. scheduled mine within the last hour. So. Good for you, Barry. Yeah. Well, they're coming here. CVS. That's the nice thing about living in one of these places. Retirement communities. <laughs> so there may be something good about getting old. Is that what you're saying, Jeff? <laughs> I haven't found it yet. <laughs> getting old is just inconvenient. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We heard you. Listen, I was just just when it was working. The I, <laughs> you know, I can't talk like this. My wife is got class, so I can't talk as I normally would because <laughs> I asked my nurse who came in. Do you think I ought to get the vaccine? the vaccination, you know? And she said, of course. I, she said, why do you ask? I said, I may be dead before I get a vaccine. <laughs> and if it's gonna make me uncomfortable, I'm not, they're coming here, I'll take anything. That's my new, hey guys, snake. Yeah. You got pain medication? No. Nope. Oh shit! <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the only problem I have, being an old cripple, is that I'm wearing down. Jeff, you've been dying since we've been coming on. You, you know, outlive all of us. Don't worry. That's about it. it. Since 1987, <laughs> I, I had my first heart attack. In 1987. Yeah, we, we've gone through two people here on this site <laughs> since we, since you've been talking about that. <laughs> hey, listen. You're probably going to be the, we're going to all die before you do. That's what I'm saying, Tom. Hey, and man, you'll be the man. last one. I'm probably the oldest one here. Don't stop. You're not old enough. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Thank you, 82. Is that what you said? 83. Who's 82? Nate. 83. 83. Who's 83? Snake. 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 
You're 83? Yeah. You're too old to die. <laughs> <laughs> and you're too ornery, Jeff. Yeah. You know, you know, that's it. I'm too fucking nasty. That's the problem. No, it's the first thing I asked when I got a nurse that comes in. She's really nice. She's got 17 patients. She buried five over the weekend. Mm. I said, I get, what a wonderful job you have. You know, I mean, how do you, she said, wow. this is what she does and it helps people. She helps me because I said, what do you have for pain or anxiety, fear, any discomfort? And with hospice, the one I'm in, they come, they give you everything. Okay, guys, I've got morphine in the house. I have morphine <laughs> in the house. And all you do is you take a little, you suck on a little pipe. That's it. <laughs> and if, it's you've got a, if, if you've got a school next door to your uh, your house, you'd you probably get a good price for some of that. <laughs> That's all. Oh. Yeah. Listen, up in Wisconsin, we're all healthy. <laughs> no, it's, I. You're eighty three, Snake. Yep. <laughs> Son of a bitch! Yeah. You didn't wear out. I'll be eight, I'll be eighty two in uh, two months. Wow! Yeah. Yeah. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you no. Nice... When people tell me that, I say, forget it. Forget it. You're you're my hero, Gib. How old is Joel? Eighty <clears> four. <throat> At least. He's he's three or four years older than I am, and I forget I forget what it goes. It depends on what time of year it is, you know, when I'm facing your birthdays. But uh, I just I just don't know. Yeah, he's, yeah. Let's say eighty five. Yeah. Let's say eighty five. Uh, something like it's close. That's, I think I think Joel's four or five years older than I am. That would confuse. And this goes with, did, you realize? That how many of us are there left from New York? Yeah, well, not many. It's hard to know. I mean, I'm not in touch with these guys. Oh, speaking of New York, do you anybody remember Cynthia Sayer? Yes. Yeah. 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 Did Did you see? She had her picture on the front of the uh, musicians' uh, paper, the International Musician. Did you right. see that? I saw that. Yeah. yeah. What, what was her it's name? A, Cynthia Sayer. Oh, banjo yes. player. Banjo player. She came to the mustache just as I was leaving. I, I taught her everything she knows. But, uh, <laughs> she's, a, she's a pretty oh, fine player. I mean, she's a good player with her own style, for sure. That's exactly the good way to put it. That's exactly right. She's got her oh, own yeah, style. We saw her in New Orleans. Say what? Well, been, Did we see her in New Orleans? No, no. I don't she think so. She's a New York gal. She, no, she, she's hung been, around, she hung around with Eddie Davis a whole lot. Yeah. Yeah, they were the Woody Allen band. Right. And, uh, I was in that band for a year uh, when uh, his when the guy he was using at the time went to London for a year for a sabbatical of some sort. And I played with the band for a year. And then after that, Eddie came in. And then after that, uh, mm. they, uh, Cynthia joined that band as well because uh, she played piano in that band while Eddie was playing banjo. Eddie became the leader of that band and uh, basically because Woody, uh, Woody just pushed everything off on him. But that was a fun band, fun band, fun band to play with. I mean, they played, they played the really old stuff, it well, was, uh, and a really old way. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was. Woody, Woody was very, used to Woody, come Woody in, was, and work, Woody, yeah. on Sunday afternoon, in New York. When Red Balaban, oh my God, that goes back, Balaban and Cats. Woody came to the club. I don't think you were there then. Possibly not. But he, because I, he lived in my neighborhood. So I gave him a lift home. He was the second worst clarinet player I have ever heard. 
<laughs> well, it was awful. But oh, and he was didn't say a word. Didn't say a word to anyone. God, he was an interesting. He presumably still is very interesting person. I mean, he. And yes. uh, if, if you started interacting with him and, and uh, you know, developed, let's say, a dialogue with a guy, he could be as funny as he was on television. I mean, or as things he wrote, he was just a scream. He and, funny? Uh, oh, yeah, he was very funny in person. I mean, on yep. a personal basis, you know, he's very funny. Very, uh, very, uh, and very serious about his clarinet playing. I mean, he played the uh, George Lewis style of clarinet because he was uh, very serious about that music. And he right. would not fit. He would not fit with Red Balaban's band, who played the New York style of, uh, you know, the more more current style. Yep. And uh, it would not. He would not be a fit with that band at all. No. But but, but he loved the music, and he he did. He took a tour, and he he used to use that band to uh, record some of his soundtracks for his movies. So that was kind yes. of fun. Yes. That was kind of fun. He recorded with the uh, uh, Preservation Hall band. Well, it was one night when I was working at your father's mustache and somebody came ran, running down and said, Woody Allen's playing with Preservation Hall. Yeah, he fit. The sound truck outside. And they used some of that soundtrack for Sleeper, the movie Sleeper. Oh, really? So yeah. As in the background. Yeah. Yeah. So, and he was, and there was clarinet, you know, playing where you could, you can only see a little bit like squeezing in, you know, because uh, I sure. was working. So we had to run down there and take a peek, though. <laughs> Well, when there's a band like the Woody Allen band, do, does he pay you guys to play with them, or do you guys get, do people pay to come in and you get money? Or? Oh, when the, when the band was playing at, uh, he, he played at uh, Jimmy Weston's club, which was uh, Frank Sinatra's favorite. Frank would come in once in a while. And then he played at uh, Michael's Pub. Michael's uh, Pub for a long time. For a long time. Uh, that's where I worked with him. And uh, then he worked at, uh, we used to get paid about 175 bucks for a night for that. So that was good. And uh, uh, where did they Cafe go? Cafe Carlisle. The, the Cafe Carlisle, right, exactly. That was where Cynthia played piano and, um, and Eddie was running the band. Yeah. And those were fairly high class places anyway, I mean. Oh yeah, very nice, yeah. People oh, went in there for a uh, the three hour nice. pitcher. <laughs> There was, no, uh, no, no. he had his Perfect. fans. Uh, Woody had his personal fans who would come in and support the band. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? The Double Day. Uh, I forget his first name, but the Double Day, who owned the, who owned the Mets at the time, as well as from the, the Double Day book fortune. He was on that. Had a big house out in Long Island. Would hire us to go out there once a year and play his uh, a party for him. And uh, he, he, was quite a, he was quite a guy. He was also very generous as well. Mm. One day I asked him because he was drinking Dom Perignon and he put ice cubes in it. And I, I just kind of <laughs> tried to politely ask him why he did that. And he said, well, <laughs> when you're as rich as I am, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> and uh, he was right. He was right. <laughs> George, uh, not uh, George, but uh, Howard Cosell was also a personal favorite of Woody's. They were good friends and he would come in once in a while. And then uh, when Howard had his TV show, uh, he had, a, you may remember that, it was a variety show played on Saturday night, I think it was seven o'clock, maybe eight for an hour at the Ed Sullivan Theater. He hired uh, Woody's band. Woody didn't play the gig, but uh, we did. And so we went out and play uh, the warm up show for warm up for his show, just, just like we did for Sullivan. In fact, it was really freaky because uh, the show was in the Sullivan Theater. So, I mean, years after doing the Sullivan warm-up, here I am doing a warm-up for Howard Cosell, same deal. <laughs> it was funny. We appeared, uh, Mustache appeared on the show too. One one time, Jim, we did uh, uh, a segment <laughs> for the show. Uh, the Howard Cosell show? Yeah. Really? How about you? That's great. Might have been the first show that he did. I don't remember that, but that's, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. At my age, I forget things. No shit. Oh, good. Good, Gib. That's exactly what I wanted to hear, Gib. What was your name again? Yeah. Who am I talking to? <laughs> I said. So yesterday I was listening to the radio and a song came on that we used to do at the Mustache. It's one of those songs that's not a standard Mustache song, but I remember it being very, uh, uh, the song was very receptive to the audience. 
Remember, we used to sing, uh, I'm Henry the Eighth, I am. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. was a non standard mustache tune that was always a big hit with the crowd. And as I was listening to it yesterday, I started, it brought back memories. I said, shit, now that was a big tune you used to play. And who would have thunk that would have been a hit at the mustache? You know? So I started sure thinking of other tunes like that. Can you think of any? Yeah. <clears throat> I remember one time y'all did that, and then uh, Les Musket quipped right after that. I asked him, "Does he know Mrs. Brown?" And he started he started singing, "Mrs. Brown, you got a lovely asshole." <laughs> <laughs> well, so I guess I guess that means you're not going to play it, okay? <laughs> he used to when he when we would have a drink, he would his toast would be up your weak kilty. <laughs> oh, oh, jeez, oh, Les Musket. Well, speaking yeah. of that, we got a, we got an. I was telling my wife when I was previewing these before we played, before I got on today. Sure, Zara. Everybody Zara. looked so hey, happy. Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. That was oh, the thing. What's this? That was the thing I loved about the mustache. Even when I was on the road, the audience and the musicians were usually very happy. It's a happy place. They had a good time. I mean, it, I can't, no, I can remember a couple of gigs on the road where it was a little deadly, but I didn't, I didn't mind. Most of the time we were laughing. Yeah. Most of the time we were laughing. At each we're other. From the back. Yeah, there you go, Barry. <laughs> Yeah. But it was probably the job that you made the less money in your life and you're just <laughs> you're just happy to be, you know, be to be doing it. And if you looked at LaRue and Roger and everybody and and especially Fred, Fred was just getting right into it. Yeah. So cool. Well, like one, one thing I've been enjoying about the thing is it's a shared memory that the only other people that would understand it is us. <laughs> You know, when you try to explain to somebody what went on when you worked at the mustache for you know years is like, well, you know, you can tell them about it, but it, you know, if they weren't there doing it, they don't quite get it. You know, exactly. Yeah, we, I worked a lot of places in my life, but the only people that I'd really want to be on a Zoom call with are you guys. <laughs> oh, people that I've worked with, I mean. Yeah. Holy shit! I got to take another pill. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. Well, the big problem is the mustache and Joel and a mustache ruined us all because we had our best job we ever wanted, and now it's not there. Yeah. Well, you well, know, yeah. I'll, I'll, somebody in New Orleans said that it's a good thing the mustache burned down because we'd all still be there if it hadn't. <laughs> Major Chatter says, God bless us to burn it down because 
if he wouldn't have burned it down, we'd all be dead. <laughs> yeah. We would have drank ourselves to death. Oh, shit. They were drinking beer and eating peanuts. Guys. I, I, I lived on peanuts and beer for about three years of my life, you know. In the seven oh. years I was there, I gained 50 pounds in New Orleans. <laughs> a lot of peanuts, huh, Peter? A lot of peanuts and beer. Yeah, a few beers. Oh, and and fried oysters and fried this oh. and fried that. No, in New York, all I can remember, what were they, the 100-pound bags of peanuts? They were big. Uh, I think they were 50. Uh, 50. Uh, probably 50. Probably sounds- 50. They were in the Probably. peanut room in the burlap sacks. That's yeah. the one. That's the what one. was that? They were in the peanut room in burlap sacks. Yeah, we it was by the front door. It was where was it? Yeah. By the front door, there was a room. We called but, it the peanut room. It's where the rats lived. You, oh, they lived all <laughs> over. There yeah. was a there, there was a coat room by the front door. Correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And this was just inside the club, though, on the right. On the right. I don't yeah. know. Just there? inside the club. I thought it was in the back. No. In New York, no? No, no those were the offices. No. And, I remember uh, one time. Skimmers there and mugs and T-shirts. And stuff oh, yeah. like that. One, one time in New Orleans, they switched. We were getting the sacks of the salted peanuts in the shell. Then to save a few bucks, they started getting the unsalted. And the band was told, you guys are taking too long of breaks because we're not selling as much beer. (laughs) 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 All all I can remember about that, in New York, Kim, do you remember the green and red light by the entrance over the door we had a manager who wanted us to take more breaks so they could get people to turn over. And they he'd step on a, what the hell was his name? He wasn't there long. Probably not. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Joel would come in and we'd have one break every two hours. That's Everyone right. would be dying. Everyone would be dying. And Joel came in. Oh, God. Well, look, I that remember was... we, we'd be packed at the at New Orleans Club, and Roger would come up to me and say, look, I'm going to turn on the heaters. Now, it's July in New Orleans. <laughs> I'll turn on the heaters. And that, he says, go into the patriotic medley, and, and I want you to have them all up saying, God bless America at 12 o'clock. On the dot, when you finish God Bless America, it has to be midnight. He said, that along with the heater, that'll get the turnover. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Well, we, it, the club changed. Because when I went back to visit, when I was teaching down in Arizona, I went back to New York, and it was... It wasn't the same club. The musicians were paying attention. <laughs> I mean, right what? Notes. God, I mean, they were playing. I remember when we wanted to bring in a new song. Joe Terra brought in. I asked Joe if we could. Get the worst tune. What the heck is that? Somebody has sources on. No, it's someone's alarm. Someone's dying. I can tell. Oh, no. No, it was. (laughs) (laughs) When we. (laughs) When we. When we. Getting his wings. (laughs) 19. Joel said it was the mid 60s in New York Kim I was there it was the mid 60s no I I learned everything I know from Kim don't blame me don't blame me for that (laughs) no I just got I figured what the hell everyone was so happy 
I didn't have to learn songs, but I remember Joe Terra and I said we were going to try and bring in really arcane, really weird songs. And he came in the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. Broken Dreams. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. That had chords. Oh, that was uh, that was music. <laughs> that was, and I brought in "Blues My Naughty Sweetie," taught to me. Boy, did I, I, I get a lot! Of, I got a lot of mileage out of that tune. Boy, oh boy! Boy, Woo. yeah. The blues you get from when you see well, swimming up. Now I got to keep my teeth in. <laughs> who can say? Who can say those words anymore? <laughs> God. I still do that tune. I still do that tune. It's still a great say tune. Hi, Bill. Great tune. I, I, I absolutely. love it. Absolutely. I still do. Did you, did you sing I, may have, I may have mentioned. I may have mentioned. I moved. I moved to France for eight years in the middle of all of this. And uh, you're kidding. And uh, and uh, the uh, I, I joined. I was in several French bands, and they loved me to do that tune because none of them could follow it. None. None of them could sing that song. Even if you spoke English well, you couldn't do it as fast as uh, the song right. requires. So I, I got very, I, I was very popular among the French bands because I could do that tune. God, you were there. I was in Scotland for three years. Yeah. And there, all you had to do was drink a lot and you could play anything. The anything. weather in Scotland, the, the, the Scottish people are marvelous and uh, they- Wonderful. And, and it's a terrific place, but they get the shittiest weather. God, it's awful. <laughs> it's just terrible. My underwear didn't dry out for two years. No, absolutely not. <laughs> was, that's, that's why they wore kilts. <laughs> I, saw, I, saw on the, oh. I saw on the news the other day that uh, there's going to be a conference in the fall. And uh, it's going to be in Glasgow. And I said, of all the places to have a climate conference, my I God, it will be, be 40 and rain the whole goddamn time. And See, I was over there working on air pollution control, living in a city where you could chew the air. Okay. You could literally <laughs> chew it. And the okay. sun came into my window five minutes on the equinox. And that was the last time I saw the sun. Yeah. It rained continually, but not heavily. Oh yeah, just well, the mist, mist all the mist time. Being foggy, right, Ireland's the same way. I mean, it's it's they're all those northern yeah. islands are all like that. Yeah, I went out and I bought, you know, being an academic and an adult. I went out and I bought a Piper's cape. It was like a long raincoat, and it had a cape over the top where a piper would put the bag under. Oh, I see, sure. It's Sherlock Holmes. And I wore that for two years and I was relatively dry because that was canvas, rubber, and canvas. Oh, that sounds wonderful. The Macintosh. And the company was in Glasgow. Sure. And it made me look thin. Jesus Christ, that was good. <laughs> did you did you try to play the the pipes at all? Once, yeah. but I wet my pants <laughs> trying to trying to fill that bag up. Well, you always start. No. You got to you got to start with a chanter. You know, you got to start with a yep. little those things, and uh, yep. then you then you got to learn the bag after that. It's a it's it really was, hard. It's not hard. It's not easy at all. I played one gig over there at the BBC Scotland. A friend of mine was a musicologist and he invited me to the Burns Supper. Bobby Burns and, Day. Oh, what a day that is. Oh, oh, that is. oh wow. my God. Just a wee Jock and Doris. What a happened? wee Jock and Doris and you all can, yeah. That's right. It's a Broadlicht Moonlicht Nicht. Broadlicht Moonlicht Nicht, yeah. See, well, no, no, you can say did that. They make, did they make you eat, did you eat haggis? Did you have some haggis? Yes, and it was, I don't even remember what it tasted like. Well, Because I'd been sampling, I'd been sampling all the malts. 
Well, I didn't know what anything tasted. Well, it's like, kind of like oatmeal that's been sitting on the back porch and had bird shit in it. You know what I mean? It's. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's, that's the recipe. That's yeah, the, oh, Lord. Sometimes no, they say it's everything with the oink ground together. It's no, the stuff. thing you wanted to have when you lived in Scotland was black pudding. Yeah, which sure. Was a sausage, sausage, and they put ox blood in it. That's right. And it would turn it black. And it tasted like it sounded. Oh, shit. It's the worst. But I tell you what I did eat there. And it kept me alive. Was there oatmeal? Yes. Porridge. The, it was delicious. The oatmeal, Porridge is right. Porridge is right. They put, they put salt on it. That's right. And I freaked out. I always asked for sugar and or cinnamon so I could eat it. But you ate that in the morning and you were good till two in the afternoon. Because that shit <laughs> just met again in your gut and just laid there. <laughs> oh god yeah. the, the food in scotland was like the weather it was about that good is that why everyone's thin there what <laughs> yeah is that why everyone is thin yeah thin it could be in new orleans let, me think, like let me think about that i don't remember a lot of thin people because when i was there working one of the things was health and all that. The Scots eat more sugar per capita than any other country in Europe. And I said, what? You can tell by their teeth or the lack of them. <laughs> it, the food there, <clears throat> I got used to it. That was scary. But we all ate Indian food. Here you go for an inexpensive Chinese meal. There it was Indian. Sure. And everyone I knew, God, fish and chips. If you survived your first bucket, you live forever. It had grease from World War II. <laughs> they cooked the food. It was... Tasty, huh? Mm. Mm. God. Well, the British Isles are not known for their uh, excellence in cuisine, that's for sure. And, uh, no. I, 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 I've tried fish and chips many times, and I just find I just it's not worth it. It's just, it's just I've given up trying. <laughs> well, it's funny because I never ate fish. And when I went over to Scotland, I had a choice to eat fish or die because the meat there if it's edible, it's so expensive. And I was living on eight pounds a week. This was 19, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Yeah, sure. And I found Indian food was the way to survive. Because well, there are, there, are tri there are tricks like that. I mean, you, you can get a good Indian meal, uh, uh, because of, because of India was a part of the British Empire for so many years, their their cuisine, their people, and all that stuff were available in the UK. If you go to yeah. if you go to you go to the Netherlands, you'll find the same thing is true of the Indonesians because the Dutch and East Indian Company had, had a big presence in Indonesia, so a lot of the people moved moved back to to the Netherlands so you can get good Indonesian food. It's it's, uh, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. And in, and in, in France, you'll find there's a whole bunch of nice uh, Vietnamese restaurants and Cambodian restaurants because the French had a big priest, big presence in those countries for a lot of for many years. And I'll tell you, with the, the Vietnamese food with the French approach to it was, is absolutely super. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful eating. In fact, in seven years, I don't think I ever had a bad meal in France. But it was some were better than others, but nothing, nothing was bad. No, I was well, so, I was so jealous of you, uh, again, when you, when you were, when I was a big Francophile, I studied French when I was in college, and when you were going to France, I was so jealous, I just yeah. thought, how is it possible, not, in, not only is he going there, but he's going to live there, well, that's right. and I just, yeah. I, I just thought that was the greatest thing. It was quite an experience, let me tell you. It took raising eight kids, years. Raising kids in a foreign country is it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. 
Were you working for IBM? Was it at that point? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. God, the mind goes back. It's really very pleasant. I don't know about you, Snake, but when the nurse comes or people come to make me feel good, I find that the best times I had that I left were some of them were the mustache. And some of them were when I lived in Scotland. The food was awful. The weather was just as bad. But the people were wonderful. And they had a music scene that was you guys would have loved. They had fabulous musicians. <clears throat> and they played folk songs. They were, Half of them were boiler makers. You know, uh, we had two nurses who sang a cappella in Gaelic. Fabulous. And they were so friendly. It was, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, you live there for a while. You get to, I sold my cowboy hat, my cowboy boots, and a mandola. Really? Yes, I was a playing. Mandola? Yes. It was the biggest fucking thing you ever saw. But it's tuned in fifths, so you can play it. That's right. I don't know why I got it, but I had it. And I met the folk singers over there. They would just so friendly and they'd meet up at the Scotia or the Hangman's before they went out to play the gigs and it was wonderful listening to them some of them my god were brilliant and others were just Billy Connolly the comedian I don't know if you've ever seen him on TV or movies he played Mr. Brown in the movie about Queen Victoria and this her gardener. <laughs> and he became really famous. And he introduced me to malt whiskey Woo at the Scotia. Woo and I said, Billy. I drink bourbon. Scotch to me is medicinal. Don't you ever know. call it scotch. Don't ever yeah. call it scotch. No. Oh, no. And then I found out all the scotches we drink here, the really expensive ones, are blended. That's right. Well, and he explained to me, they blend them. The bet, whatever. And he taught me about <clears throat> malts. And I drank, I had a little drink of one. And it was unbelievable. As bad as their food was, that's how good the scotch. Mm. It's Just, not scotch, it's not scotch, lass, it, lad, it, it's whiskey. Whiskey, whiskey, <laughs> that's it. Whiskey. That's it. The, <laughs> well, the more week. I drank, the, the more I drank, the easier it was for me to understand them. Because well, a, the fun to, a, a, fun, a fun thing to do is to take that driving tour across North North Scotland. You go from village to village. Each one has their own malt. And their it's, own uh, and it's uh, it's quite an experience there. It's fun. Yeah, I remember losing my knees. I don't remember waking up between two sets. I played the folks. <laughs> I played the folk scene. And we went to incredibly small isolated yeah, villages and the big the big thing was to have music in a pub and 99% was scottish folk gaelic folk music oh but it was good so i was a mm. hit all they wanted me to do was play al jolson songs yeah that you know at, 
but they were the friendliest people. And I got into malt whiskeys. And I can remember almost, I think I did fall asleep between the first and second set because it was so smooth. I had never tasted anything like that. It's easy to overdo it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's, you, you know, you turn around the next minute, you're looking at the ceiling. It was, <laughs> no, no, no. It, and I found out that they only make as much whiskey as the stream or river can produce fresh water. So Glen Morangi or Glen Fiddick, all of those, the glens of the valley, and they are limited by the amount of water, the flow. See, I, that was my third graduate degree. And all I remember are the whiskeys. Well, last, last week we were talking about playing Dixie. So I found one, one of Billy's tunes isn't Dixie, but it's close. Okay. Sure, that wouldn't be appropriate, but waiting for the Robert E. Lee. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! There's some, there's some real Hall of Famers in that shot. I'll tell you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Waiting for the God. For the Robert E. Lee. Did you, Jim? You were there when the New York Club opened. Yeah. Who had Joel? Had he developed the? Tune list by then? Well, basically, yes, because Boston had been open for two years. Got it. Yeah. We got something weird up here, Tom. What's that? Okay, yeah. sorry. I was trying to put that. Yeah. Somebody had Is asked that... about, somebody had asked about John Fowler last week or Johnny mm -hmm. Fowler. Somebody remembers? Okay. I don't remember who asked about it, but Last I heard, he was in, uh, he made a lot of money getting into kitchen remodeling in Denver. Oh, okay. And then he uh, sold that company. He moved down to, he's in Florida, or yeah. not, or in Mexico, I'm sorry. He yeah. bought a bar down there, and that's the last I heard from him. That's been a long time ago. Because uh, I found an old picture of Johnny Fowler, and that's where Karen Ali. And that's Bruce Melanson and Karen, Karen Ali. Yeah. 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 Wow. No, Bruce Malone. Yeah, Johnny, I think Johnny worked up in Denver for a while, didn't he? Johnny Fowler. Yeah. Did you? Yeah, know he that? did. He and Danny Richardson came to Denver. I don't know, sometime seventy-one or seventy-two, in a Volkswagen bus that broke down in Larimer Square, and they were hanging out there. And we opened the club, and they came in, and they stayed with us for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> now, Billy, Perfect. did you know that, that Bruce Malone became a cocktail piano player? Oh yeah, now he's Philip. He's Phil Malos on that. He changes his name to Philip. Philip Malos. Philip Malos. And he plays at like uh, the Pontchartrain Hotel, mm -hmm. stuff like that. He's doing real well. Yeah. And he I, told me he said he learned all those songs from singing with us at the Mustache. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. No, the old gals really like him too, because I, I I shot a 90th birthday party. I was doing the video for it, and Bruce Phil was playing piano. And all them old gals are turning their hearing aids up, man. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to hear some, some Bruce. Okay, I get off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. See y'all next week, fellas. I gotta right, go. See you later. I was gonna okay, Rick. Okay, yeah. Rick. Stay safe. All that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Barry. Hey. Barry, do you remember John Hester, the trombone yeah. player from the Navy band? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sure do. I'm, I'm on Facebook with him. Where is he living? He lives in Mississippi somewhere. Is he on Facebook as John Hester? 
Yeah. That sounds that sounds familiar. Did he play in New York? I think he did. I don't think he played in New York, but he, 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 was, done, he Joel had a, a gig in the southeast, like Georgia or something like that. And he needed a oh. trombone player, and John Hester went up and I got hooked Hester up with Joel. He went and played the gig. Okay. Uh, I'm talking about the last five years. Okay. Uh, back in the seventies, John was in the the Navy the there was a Navy, I guess it was a steel drum band that the Navy had of Navy musicians in New Orleans and John. That's what, it's that Navy experience that makes me think of, I know him because we had a, a guy was in the Navy band who came to play the mustache because he was stationed out on, uh, on Long Island the Navy base out there and he was there for about six months and he played with me at Yankee Stadium and I'm just trying to remember his damn name. I thought it was Hester. Yeah, no, well, it might have been Hester. I don't think it was the same John Hester. It could have been a different Hester. I mean, yeah, obviously, yeah. but... Uh, but John used to sub for us over at the Mustache every once in a while. He's a pretty good guy and a good player. Yeah. You know... In the casinos down there on the Gulf Coast, those shows. Now, that's what he's doing. Well, good for him. Good for him. Nice to hear somebody's still working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, guys, I gotta go. Take care. Yeah, me, me too. Good night, Peter. Good night, Peter. Good night, Peter. Good night, Peter. Bye -bye. Stay yeah, safe. Me too. It's, it, it's dinner time here. I gotta go down and make uh, some some spaghetti. Right. It's, 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 my, it's my day in the barrel here. Hey, yeah. 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 recipe from Chris for spaghetti. Take care of yourself, Snake. <laughs> oh, you all yeah, Snake, you. thanks for thanks for joining us. Come back. Hey, yeah. Snake, good to see you, man. Good to see you. Yeah, next, a good one, y'all. Next week, guys. See you next week. Mike Johnson, thank you. Thank you for yep. the picture. What? Right. It's great to, great to see you guys again. So, guys, get, let me tell you something that happened. Uh, last Saturday night, I had my grandkids over. We're sitting here at the table playing Monopoly. And one of the grandkids uh, tested positive for COVID. Mm. You know, so me and my wife, we've been in, we put ourselves in quarantine the whole week, you know, with no yeah. symptoms. And so today was our day to go get tested. So we went and got tested and we're negative. Good. Okay. Oh, that's good. Which is good. We still have to stay in quarantine till Sunday. Yeah. Did you, you get know? any shots yet, Barry? No, but I was, uh, I registered for my shots right before this meeting, right, right before the Zoom meeting. So, I got both shots already. I got my I got first both one shots. Today, Ira. Hmm. I got my first one today. Good for you, Mike. And Ira, you were the first guys I've talked to to have both of them. Yeah. Except for my daughter. Yeah. My daughters well, are in the. You got to remember where I live. I'm in God's waiting room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my daughters have both of them, but they're both nurses. That's why they got them both. They know? said for people 65 and over, all of Florida was there. <laughs> the whole state. There were three people that couldn't go. <laughs> but yeah, I got both shots. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now they they uh, had scheduled things through Oxner and then they canceled them all because they didn't get the, the um, doses they were supposed to get. Wow. But you know what? Florida State song. You know what Florida State song is? Do you? Ira? What, Louisiana State song? Florida State song. Florida? The early bird gets the dinner? No. Florida <laughs> State song is way down upon a Swanee River. Did you know that? It is. No, I did not know that. It's way down upon a Swanee River after the Swanee River, which crosses up in the panhandle of Florida. But I think it's for a different reason. I think because the real name of that song, when, when Foster wrote it, is old folks at home. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Right? It might be. That's the real name of the song, Old Folks at Home. What a great name. What a great state song for Florida. Old folks yeah. at home. <laughs> the second shot went much, much better than the first. The first one, we waited in the middle of the night for six, seven hours. Really? This one we had appointments for. We were in and out in 15 minutes. Yeah, but you at least got them. Well, Did you have more reaction to the second shot? A lot of people were talking and saying the second shot bothered them more than the first one. Good to see you folks. I gotta run. Uh, okay. I'll join you.
Hope you're doing good. Good, okay. good to see you. Okay, so Barry, thanks for Barry, coming. where'd your grandchild pick up COVID? Um, they don't know. They don't know? Yeah, daddy just walked into Does the Does he go to school? I don't think. They, I mean, yes, they're in school, but we don't think it's- Oh, school. they're in school, but we don't think they caught it from school. She, no? She, okay. But they're okay, right? Yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. And Dottie and I are okay. Dottie, say hello to the guy. Hi, Dottie. Hey, Dottie. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Dottie. Hi, Dottie. She doesn't Faster look like she had COVID. You're looking so dapper. Faster away VIP. Huh? Oh, that, oh that, yeah. that, That's the program yeah. she's into. Exercise. Oh, okay. Hmm. Exercise program. One day I'll join in about 100 years. <laughs> 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 yeah. Maybe 101 years. How you yeah. doing good, Barry? Yeah. All right, Mike, guys. You, well, we'll yeah. talk with you later. Mike, yeah. did, you get any shots yet? did you get a shot yet, Mike? Yeah, this morning. First one. Oh, first one? Yeah. Yeah. Nice good. and easy and smooth. Mm-hmm. Barely felt okay, good. Guys. Check it out. See you next week. All right. Hey, all. Hey, next week we'll come on. Take care, everybody. More. We live the days of the past, some mustache stories like uh, Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> so long, guys. All right. Yeah, Thanks again, Tom. Later. Bye, Billy. Bye.